Welcome back to the channel folks. Today is a special day because we are going to talk about the Scat Pack. First, we got to do a cold start. We got to flip this microphone around so you get it in all of its beautiful, incredible glory while that little kid is screaming down the street. All right, folks, so we have not talked about the Scat Pack in a while. We've been talking about the Prius, a little bit about the BMWs. This guy is going away. Two more payments and it's gone. Can't wait. And then we'll go looking for something to maybe trade that in on and really, really, really kick up the content here. Um, but today we're gonna talk about the Scat Pack. And I'm gonna talk, it's been two years now since I bought the car and I still love the car. I was killing it because I was daily driving it. So what I'm gonna share with you today is what it was like for, it's really been about a year that I almost every day drove this car. All right, so it's not the most ideal day to drive the Dodge in the rain, but we're going to do it anyways because it's been too long. So let's get on the road. Slow leak in the front tire. Freaking wonderful. All right, so I put together 10 things that I believe you should know when you buy one of these Dodges, especially if it's gonna be your only car, because while it's amazing, it's probably the most fun car I've ever had, there are a few drawbacks. There are some really cool things too, so I put them in this list. So, number one, this car is comfortable. It is comfortable to drive. It's definitely rides a little bit rough, um, but you want that in this kind of car. But because it's such a big and substantial car, you have all this room on the inside, you have a great cabin area, you've got a very comfortable seat, um, you know, big, fat, thick steering wheel, and everything about the car is just comfortable. It's like driving a, a big, you know, sports slash land yacht, and it feels that way minus the suspension. So, but the suspension's not that bad. Again, it's kind of what you would want in this car. So if you're a little averse to, like right now I'm in a rough road in LA and it's bouncy a little bit, but on the highway, this thing's really smooth and, uh, and handles, feels like it's gonna handle well if I need to uh, make a quick, quick adjustment on the road. So the second thing I learned this last year daily driving this thing is it's got all the tech. I mean, in comparison to high-end cars, this thing has pretty much everything, if not more, than, for example, my 740 BMW has. I've got the lane departure warning. Oh, gotta make a turn here. I've got the lane departure warning. I've got the adaptive cruise control. I've got um, Apple CarPlay, um, a power seat. Now, I say seat because the passenger side's not power. The driver's seat is. Um, it's got everything, you know, the one-touch windows. This thing's got everything that my 740 has um, and that I would need, and it's way less money. All right, so the third thing I learned daily driving this thing is it's a cop magnet. Um, I spent, and I've spent so much time pulled over to the side of the road. And yes, it was for tinted windows, but I got limo tint on my Prius, and I've not been pulled over once. I've been right alongside cops and they don't pull me over I mean they waved at me I mean it's just insane there's just not a not an issue in that car in this car you are going to get pulled over even if you're not going fast they think you're going fast I mean the car sounds loud it's it gets their attention and and you know what I think it is I think they like the car and they want to check the car out that's what I think but I could be wrong but I'm telling you well, well let's say out of the you know, 10, 11 times or more that I've been pulled over, half the time they made a comment about how cool the car was, more than half the time they let me go, so that's a good sign. I don't think anybody, anybody dislikes this car, and 
you know, cops seem to have an affinity for it as well, so much that they like to pull me over and um, talk to me and check it out and give me heat for, whoops, give me heat for things that otherwise on any other car I wouldn't get any heat for. Them. All right, so the fourth thing that I've appreciated about this car that made me drive it more often than my other car as well is I really love the amount of trunk space. This trunk space is humongous. You can carry three golf clubs and two bodies if you needed to. It's it's just enormous, kind of like the old the old school Dodges. I mean, it's you know they 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 were able to duplicate dupl <laughs> they were able to duplicate that really well. And I'm able to carry everything I need. I've got all my camera gear, I've got all my work stuff, my presentation equipment, my briefcase. I mean, I've got everything I need in that humongous trunk. And I enjoy being able to take my stuff with me um, because I'm all over the road, thousands of miles a week, and I need my stuff. So if you need a car where you can carry things, and it's a, you know, a fast car, a fun car where you can carry a lot of stuff, I mean, you're not gonna have any problem. Whoa, lane departure warning. And there's nobody next to me. That's the only thing. Maybe once in a while, help. It's, uh, it's a ghost car. And right, number five thing I learned and that you will experience as well. When you buy one of these, you don't buy it because you just need a commuter. Wow, I gotta pull over and see this. Look at this. It was dangerous, but look at that scat pack. Whoa, that's awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. Round recalculation. Right, I'm totally late to my appointment. Number five, you bought this car because it's cool. You bought this car because it's fast, it's got style, it's got image, it's even got a little bit of grace, which means you're gonna treat it like you would treat a $250,000 supercar. You're gonna park this thing far away from other cars like I do now because the first month or so I had this thing, I ended up getting two door dings and that sent me through the ceiling those videos are below um, but you're gonna care about it you're gonna love it you're gonna have this relationship and emotional connection to this car like unlike any other car because that's why you bought it and it'll grow on you because it's so fun to drive and because it's so visceral and you feel so tied to it so you're going to be able to burn more calories every day because you're gonna park it far out in the parking lot like I do I don't want anybody dinging it even though I could fix it I just I don't want I don't want my baby injured so you will act a little strange with this car you will treat it like you just spent a quarter million bucks on it this is another thing I love about this car so you see that car in the right hand side of the road parked in the meters in this lane then you see this guy in this mini so I've got to make sure that I don't get stuck behind that Lexus step on it, and then the guy gets way in the rear view mirror. So, another thing I love about this car. Alright, here we are in Beverly Hills. Check it out. So number six, this thing is really reliable. The Dodge Challenger is an incredible car. The way it was built, the way it was designed, I have had no problems in two years and 26,000 miles with the car. Not a check engine light, not an issue. I've changed the back tires, that's the only thing I've done, and some oil changes. That's it. This car has been great. I can't say the same for my BMWs. Those things have been in the shop constantly, so that's a big deal. Because with all the miles I'm driving, to be stopped, broken down the side of the road, even though it's under warranty, this would make no sense. But now, let's go get my hair cut. All right, folks, so haircut is done. Let's get back to the video. So number seven, you'll be terrified in the rain. This car does not have traction. I don't care what anybody says, got traction control or the wide tires, I don't care what they say. When I drive this thing in the rain, I'm terrified. Um, the power makes it almost impossible to maintain traction, and 
I don't know if it's the width of the tires and they're not built for rain or weather, but this thing slides around like an ice skate. So you need to have respect for the car. And you need to know what you're doing if you're gonna be driving into the rain. Just merging onto the freeway can turn into a terrifying and exciting e-ticket ride. And you just need to know that and respect that and acknowledge that. So if you live in a climate where there's a lot of weather, a lot of rain, a lot of ice, a lot of snow, you probably don't want to take this thing out on the road without very special tires. Check out the Ferrari. to make a quick pit stop. You too. Thank you. I have a quick martini before I go walking around Beverly Hills. Let me get that for you. Thank you. You got it. And to Ferrari. This is what I love about this town. Check that thing out. All right, number eight. Number eight seems stupid, but I think it's probably one of the best, which is driving this Dodge Challenger, you'll make friends everywhere. Not that you need friends, but I'll tell you, if you go to the gas station, you'll have people talking to you. If you're driving down the road, pull up the stoplight, whether they're driving one or not, they wave at you, they tell you it's a nice car. People have conversations with you that otherwise, if you're driving any other car home post, they wouldn't have a conversation with you. If you're driving a Ferrari or Lamborghini, they probably wouldn't even talk to you because they think maybe you're pompous. But in this car, people come up and just break into conversation, tell you how much they love the car. Everywhere you go, it's also, just incredibly, incredibly versatile. You can take this car anywhere. You can go to a luxury high-end event or just go to dinner at Denny's. It doesn't matter. You're gonna find people that you're gonna connect with with this car. Ballet attendants park it up front right next to the Rolls Royces, right next to the Lamborghinis, right next to all the fancy cars. And then when you come out, they tell you what a cool car it is. Or the guy in the Audi, R8 they didn't say anything to. I don't know, I can't explain it, but there's something about this car that's visceral in human beings that we just connect with, I don't know, maybe it's just the, I don't want to say masculinity because women love this car too. Everybody loves it, but it's just, I don't know, it's an icebreaker. Bugatti. Holy moly. We gotta catch this Bugatti. Oh my god. Look at this Bugatti. That was embarrassing, but well worth it. It was a Bugatti. I don't care who's driving it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was awesome. I'm out of breath. Something coming up, so. All right, folks, here they come. Check these things out. I hope we can see them. You can hear them for sure. Let's talk about number nine. You're gonna have an irresistible urge to buy shit for your car. There's no way around it because there's so much available for the Dodge Challenger. You're gonna be looking at everything, grills and new hoods and new wheels and wraps and stripes and stickers and uh, what else? Um, engine modifications, oil catch cans. What the hell is an oil catch can? But that's what's gonna happen and you're gonna be buying it all like I have. A lot of it that I've never stuck to my car because I love exactly how it looks. So get your wallet ready. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I am paparazzi. Brad Pitt's coming. <laughs> so this is what happens when you carry a camera around in public. Everybody thinks you're a paparazzi, especially when you're Beverly Hills. So they're coming up and asking me who's here. 
because of course there has to be a celebrity here if there's a big giant camera that some dude in hats carrying around. Whoa. All right, so I'm at the Regent Beverly Wilshire in Beverly Hills. I've got a lunch appointment to do some business. They're probably not gonna let me turn the camera on in there, so I'll catch you with number 10 right after this. Gotta turn you off now. That's the Regent Beverly Wilshire, folks. Wish I could have taken you further in there, but you know how it goes in this town. Nobody likes cameras. <laughs> Nobody likes cameras. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about number 10. Hey, throw me a little rev, dude, come on. All right, so number 10, biggest one, the gas mileage. Gas mileage is not good on this car. And you know, I wanna use the word horrible because really it's horrible um, because of how I drive the car, not because of the ratings or what Dodge says, which I don't even know what it says, 18, 20. I mean, it might be, whatever it is, it's better than what I actually get and what you'll probably actually get. Because I think anybody who buys this car is likely going to want to drive this car the way it's meant to be driven, which is a little bit hard. You want to hear that, you want to hear that Hemi, you want to hear that motor, you want to hear the exhaust, because the exhaust in stock is really good. So you're going to burn through gas, even parked while I'm just on the phone or doing some work when I'm out traveling, this thing sucks gas. So I don't know, I don't know if there's an answer for this, but I'll show you. Uh, well, my map's taking over right now, but I think I'm averaging about 12 miles to the gallon, 12 and a half. Let me see if this will focus so you can see. 12 and a half miles to the gallon. And frankly, that to me, that for me is better than the normal. And when I go get gas, the problem is, is it's you know super unleaded, so you're spending $75, $80 when it's $4.50 a gallon. If you live somewhere where it's a lot cheaper than that, then it's not so bad. Um, but I also know that putting lots and lots of miles in these cars is probably not a good idea. But gas mileage is really painful because as many miles as I drive, I'm gonna be doing $75 even if it gets down to you know, 350 or something, I'm still putting, you know, 65, $70 in the gas tank every other day. At the very best, it's maybe twice a week. So that's why I bought that little Prius. So gas mileage is an issue. If you think you're gonna drive this thing every single day and you drive a lot of miles for your job, you're going to be in excruciating pain standing at the pump, swiping your credit card. So my feeling is, is as a daily driver, Gas mileage kind of excludes it, for me at least, because of the amount of miles I drive, but if you live really close to your job, you drive, you work for eight hours, you get back in your car and you leave, then no big deal, you can stretch it out, you don't have to drive it as hard, maybe, I mean, you could be careful if you're sitting bumper to bumper traffic, it won't be so bad, so. That's number 10, folks. Now, I'm sure I triggered some of you out there, since the trolls seem to be really, really uh, awake and alive lately is why aren't you talking about any of the mechanical systems or the the engine or the you know the engine modifications or you know the i don't know the specs of the motor or things like that's not who i am i think i represent a lot more people out there than those the gearheads which god bless them for knowing all this stuff so i'm just sharing with you things that i think might be important to you and things that might be interesting to you as well about this car that might either encourage you to buy one or maybe it discourages you from buying one. Um, I don't think it's a car for everybody and it's certainly not a car for everything and for, for certainly commuting long distances. It's very impractical. So with that said, thank you so much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and I will be eternally grateful. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Brad Pitt is in the Beverly Wilshire right now. No, he is.
I wouldn't lie to you. Brad Pitt's in the region Beverly Wilshire right now. Totally naked. <laughs> He's not, but that's hilarious, you gotta admit. <laughs>